Georgia Tech, Industrial Design. Yeah, that's my undergrad. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I also got a minor in Computer Science. If you stumble on this video, you probably wonder what a UX designer's career path is like from the school to the first job. And then I figured, hmm, why not just share mine? So yeah, that is what this video is about. And first, let's roll the intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. This video is kind of inspired, interestingly, by another YouTuber who also went to Georgia Tech. Hi Jarvis. He did his in 12 minutes, so I guess this video is my Georgia Tech industrial design degree in 12 minutes. I actually don't know how long it would take. So here we go, boom, my diploma from 2016. And now I'm going to put up my officially unofficial transcript and go through all the courses I took and see what went down from there. All right, freshman year, let's dive right in. Major, minor, computer science, people thread, which is the HCI thread. Okay, so fall 2012, that was my first semester at Georgia Tech. This says pre-industrial design because back then there's no industrial design major as a freshman. You have to go through this College of Architecture courses first. That's why the first two classes were from COA, uh, Fundamental Design and Built Environment, which is a studio class that we did so many different drawings, wire modeling, clay modeling, drawing a stapler, taking apart a stapler and have a sketchbook. They have to draw a certain amount per week. Very fundamental. And sadly, I got a B. And then I found out the teacher literally gave everybody a B in this class, no matter if you work super hard or just okay, kind of hard, which pissed me off still today. And then intro design and built environment is a lecture class. They will invite some guest speakers to talk about what they think about design, what they are working on, easy A. And then English composition, calculus to G classes. Spring 2013, second semester of my freshman year. Still pre-industrial design, elementary Chinese one. Why not? Just for the fun of it. I don't really need the class, but it's an A, it's an A. Fundamental design and built environment too. So this one is another studio class that we did so much woodworking. We learned about how to make joints, use wood glue, use clay, and use different saws. And then CS class, computer science course, intro to media computation. So at Georgia Tech, everybody was required to take a computer science course, even if you're a business major or English major. That got me into CS though, I have to say. Well done there, Georgia Tech. So we did some simple Python programming to make a program that changes all the pixels to red. It just like clicked and I was like, whoa, the world is like this way because of computer science. Also, the teacher was super good. So I remember my final project, I stayed up until three, four in the morning to finish it. Not because it's really hard and difficult to do, but because I was having so much fun, I would just keep iterating on the program, keep coding and making things happen. So you can really see how passion can take you really far. And then English Composition 2, this class is about walking and walking as a therapy. Special topic, Georgia Tech only class. Sadly, they won't let you to take too many design courses as a freshman. So this is what I can squeeze in. So this is about teaching you how to take your idea from zero to a prototype. It's a fun class. Psychology, I end up dropping it because too much work for the other five classes. After spring 2013, was summer 2013. I went to UC Berkeley to take calculus three and physics because those are the prereqs for aerospace engineering minor. That's why I spent that summer to take all the prereqs for that. Fast forward for 2013 and elementary Chinese two. Why not? Intro to object oriented programming. So at this moment, I also thought about minoring in computer science. I have to say way too ambitious. I want to major in industrial design minor in aerospace engineering, and also another minor in computer science. It's a more or less a Java course. I got a B, very sad. I, I really know that I did not fundamentally understand what object-oriented programming is. But right now, think back, it's so simple. Anyways, I, I passed at least, right? ID Studio, the first industrial design focus studio class. We did a, a cardboard chair, a, a screwdriver, and a parking kiosk project. I think I mentioned the parking kiosk project in some of the videos. I will have a link up here. 
and then visual design thinking this is a this is more like a sketching class design visually on paper so we learn from the fundamental how to use ballpoint pen to draw a straight line or as straight as you could and then draw ellipses draw a rectangle draw a box how to use markers tracing papers yeah good class very good class and then next one industrial design computing one which is about teaching you how to use adobe creative suite it's more like an introduction to the software you learn how to you figure out how to use it yourself but the projects are kind of dumb i have to say but hear me out so it's teaching you how to use photoshop to make a 3d rendering of a 3d object but i was like why don't you just 3d model it and then render it but i guess that's how you would do it if you don't have the 3d modeling tool a long time ago, like I was thinking like a long time ago, but I think in 2013, is it still really needed? Interactive product. I really like this class. This one is about learning electronics like Arduino, which is a microcontroller. You can hook up different sensors and make it do different things. Turn lights on and off. We also learn about a program called processing, which is a Java based program. So you write code in Java and then you can move your cursor on the canvas. And if it touches the circle and then it explodes or it scales or something like that. So a really interactive software, which is why it's called an interactive product. And because I was also taking, you see, intro to object oriented programming It's a Java based class. So it also helped this class. So you see how things, how courses are playing well with each other. So that's my first semester of my sophomore year. Next, let's see. Spring 2014, intro to aerospace engineering. Aha, see, that's why I took the physics two and calculus three or vector calculus in UC Berkeley over the summer. Uh, but I ended up not doing aerospace engineering because I don't feel like they quite connect to my interests as much as computer science. That's why the gray is S means satisfied. I changed it to pass fail or audit, whatever that is. ID Studio 2, we did a plywood chair. We did a packaging design for an iPhone case. We also did a group project on the Internet of Things, which means you need to have an app and some physical product. Of course, because I want to learn more about UI and UX, I took the lead on that side of the project. My teammates were more ID um, focused people. So it makes sense for that work to be divided. And then human factors in design, which was about is a lecture class on teaching you about how humans work, how their mind work, how they think, how will people act, uh, how people sit. So you really learn about how the different human characteristics and attributes will factored will be factored into the design, human factors in design. Next one, design for interaction. If you look at the number, it's 6510, which is a graduate level course. I'm surprised I could take that as a sophomore. I'm proud. This is more like an advanced version of interactive product, which I just took in the previous semester. We went through some more advanced sensors and so like capacitive touch sensor, LED array, LED matrix, some other more advanced sensors. It's a very good class. I can connect more to how these sophisticated electronics work. And next one is user interface design, lecture-based class with projects as assignment. This is less about design, but more about evaluation. Like how do you do research? How do you validate your research? So you learn about the whole history of user interface from a cursor click model to a touch screen and a lot of different research methods, survey versus interview, questionnaire, a liquor scale. Very good class, very informative. Recommend if you have something similar in your school. Moving on, after spring 2014, be summer 2014 i went to parsons in new york city for a five weeks summer course on graphic design which is a more print design focus i really learned a lot from that program i feel like my graphic design skills went from a c to a b plus not a yet but great improvement within five weeks if i were to do it again i would do it again back to georgia tech for 2014 junior year first semester history of modern industrial design it's a lecture based class just to memorize what this object is, who designed it, at what time, what was the movement behind it. ECA. Interactive ID Studio 1 studio class. In junior year, you can pick your path of what type of industrial design you want to focus on. So there are three tracks, traditional ID, so you design like furniture and bikes and physical products. Second one, which is this one, interactive industrial design. So you design interactive products. So like think about internet of things, iPhones, electronics, gadgets. The other one is healthcare. Next is design method. This is a good class. It teaches you how to design products from zero to finish. Research, ideate, prototype, test, and then it goes back to ideate because you have things to fix or you want to iterate. You keep goes in loop and then you know or you learn 
the design is not linear, so you might go back to research and do more and do more prototyping and go back to ideation and research and then very end, you go to production. Good class. Next is design for interactive environment. Again, 67, 63, a graduate level course. I'm taking so many graduate level classes. So this one is taught by the same teacher from the design for interaction, but this one is about scaling that interactivity to a larger size. It's an environment, it's a room scale. So we did projects on projection mapping, computer vision model, designing for a hospital, for a waiting room, if a motor in a room, how do you, how do you anticipate or expect what kind of interaction can be happening. Very good class, I like it. Then spring 2015, second semester of my junior year, art history, product studio. This is my first studio that I actually say, hey, can I not do the project that says in the project brief, but do another project because I want to do this, 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 and this. And you know what? I got the permission to do that. And that project actually still lived in my current portfolio. Again, I think passion can take you really far. I really put a lot of time and effort to that project. And that ended up being something that I want to do, I like to do, and I want to keep doing more as if it was my full time. So it does make sense in my portfolio. Plus it's also more polished than other ones. Industrial Design Computing 2, which was a class that teaches you how to use SOLIDWORKS to do 3D models. Again, I don't like SOLIDWORKS or 3D modeling, but I think it was because SOLIDWORKS really sucks. Maybe if I started with Cinema 4D, it would be better. But anyways, next is culture of objects. So this one is more of an analytical and critical way of looking at all the design objects that we live with every day. Quite interesting. I never thought about design that way. So good class, actually. Next is advanced sketching. Oh, 6420, another graduate level class. So this one is the advanced version of visual design thinking. So this one teaches you how to use tone paper, like paper with colors, and white pencil, markers, use blender. And the final project was interesting. It was taking a brand and a product that this brand does not make, and then design a product for this brand. So I did a shoe design for the Nokia brand. If Nokia were to release a pair of shoes, what would they look like? Interesting project, right? So after spring 2015 is summer 2015, which was ta -da, my first UX design internship. If you want to know more about that one, link up here. And then after my internship, that's when I started to finish most of my GE classes. So you know, health class, stay healthy. Principle of microeconomics. Let's skip ahead, general psychology. Back to ID, materials too, this is about learning manufacturing techniques, stamping, die cast, rolling, injection molding, different types of molding, welding, all those techniques uh, to basically walk you through what does it take to get your product made. Very informative class, I like it. Invention Studio, this is another class that I say, hey, can I do that project instead of what it says in the brief? And again, I got a pass, I end up doing an app instead of a physical product for this class, which again, still have a spot in my portfolio. Next is parametric product modeling. This is more advanced SOLIDWORKS class, but you know, I found out I don't like SOLIDWORKS. I don't like 3D modeling. I'm going down the UI UX path. So I did not really take this class. It's more like a sit in and audit. That's why there's a V for my grade. I don't know what it stands for actually, victory. So spring 2016 was my second semester in my senior year of ID program. So I took data structure and algorithm. Unfortunately, I got a B because I did not fundamentally understand the structure and the algorithm. But now I do, so it's okay. It's a good intro. The objects and design, which was about how to design or plan your code in advance so that you can build more scalable apps or websites. And then next is design of online community. It's a computer science course, but I think it's interesting because it touched on a lot of design elements uh, in it. Like we talked about a lot of different online communities like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the, the Chinese Weibo, the Chinese Twitter, Chinese Facebook, forums, Airbnb, then the context, cultural history, the rating system, why do we need to rate each other, like to build trust and things like that. It's a very interesting class. I like it, the professor was really good. And then was the materials one, which is about sustainability design, design with a sustainability concept in mind. So you can reduce, recycle and reuse. Last one is special topic. This is another class. I say, hey, can I take this class but not do the work? And of course I got away with it. It's more like a trade and the deal was, I'm gonna do my own projects on my portfolio, 
keep interviewing with companies for the internship in, in the next summer. I will also make a cinematic video. The fourth one, which is interesting, was to be the guest speaker for this class, which I was actually literally taking to talk about how to use After Effects to create animation to present your project because it's digital presentation. Cool, that concludes this semester. And somehow this shows up, summer 2016 professional internship. This is the one that I got my Pinterest product design internship. If you're interested in that, Link up here. For 2016, my last semester, US history, again, GE class. What I like about this one is we read a book on Wonder Woman, and I like Wonder Woman. And then I did Invention Studio 2, another industrial design studio class. And of course, I raised my hand, hey, can I do that project instead of this one that it says on the paper? And yes, I did my own project and it was on my portfolio still. Sensation and Perception, which is a psychology class think about psychology, sensation perception is just a subset of it which just talk about senses like how your eyes see, how you hear, how you smell, how you taste and how you feel and then last one intro to cognitive science this is about human mind, human brain, learning, thinking, decision making touches also a little bit on artificial intelligence and yeah that concludes my four and a half years at Georgia Tech four and a half years because one I need to get my computer science minor well, because I wanted to. It has becoming one of my biggest strengths, I would say, because I code to prototype my design, my ideas. Second advantage is my Pinterest internship in summer 2016. That wouldn't happen if I did not spend another semester at Georgia Tech. Because I did that, that gave me another summer to get another internship, which will help for sure my next internship or my first full-time job. So I planned it ahead. Yeah, so that's the degree. Boom, I did it. Yay, one industrial design major, one computer science minor, end up doing UI, UX, software design work. So a few thoughts and takeaway. Number one, school projects that ended up in my portfolio are only the ones that I raise my hand and say, hey, can I do my own project instead of this one? Interesting, right? Again, that proves the point of passion can take you really far. I want to do the project because I'm passionate about it. I believe in it, I want to do it, I like it. I want to do it as if it's my full time. So I spend more time, more efforts on it, and it ends up pretty good, well polished. So they ended up staying in my portfolio, which makes sense. Number two, which is my biggest regret at Georgia Tech, which was, I wish I had gone study abroad in my first semester in my junior year. Because you know, the Scandinavian culture and the design and the history, is so rich, so cool. Biggest regret, I should have done that. It was my biggest regret, especially because that interactive design studio, I did not get a lot out of that. So I think it would have been better if I were not taking that studio in Georgia Tech, but spending my time in Sweden. Hope this helps someone out there. My UX design career is definitely not linear, but it doesn't matter because once you find your favorite or any particular design that you like, you can always pivot as most of the design thinkings and skills will be still relevant and transferable. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the own. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you in the next video. Cheers.